The Dora Westbury milling machine was first conceived by Edgar T. Westbury, who was a distinguished model engineer and prolific writer of engineering books and articles and magazines and other publications. When, in 1964, after three years in development, he introduced the Westbury Light Vertical Milling Machine to readers of Model Engineering magazine. Now, at the time, most people, most model engineers, did not have access to milling equipment, as most machines available were large, industrial, and just too large and expensive for the average amateur. So most milling operations were done on the lathe with the use of a vertical milling slide. Edgar T. Westbury's light vertical milling machine was a welcome introduction to the amateur workshop and was available as a set of castings and parts for the home engineer to build themselves. And although the machine was welcomed, many amateurs still found that some of the components were just too large and difficult to machine and the mill was not the major success that Edgar had hoped. Then, in 1967, an engineer called Arnold Thropp, who ran an engineering business in the South Yorkshire village of Daw, collaborated with longtime friend Edgar, and the entire design of the machine was rethought and redesigned. It was made to be easier to manufacture by the hobbyist, as all the larger castings were now pre-machined and then sold as a kit of components, which could then be built up and made by anyone with a three and a half inch centre lathe, such as the Myford 7 series which was a very popular lathe in the home workshop at the time. In 1968, the renamed and redesigned Dorr Westbury milling machine was born, and this proved to be very successful, as many hundreds of casting sets were sold and built worldwide in the sheds and workshops of model engineers. After Edgar T. Westbury passed away in 1970, the following year, Arnold Thropp transferred the production of the Dorr Westbury milling machine to a company called Model Engineering Services in Chesterfield. The Dorr Westbury mill was now in the capable hands of Ivan Law, who had previously been an engineer at Rolls-Royce. He continued to develop the machine at MES and he soon released an improved Mark II version. At the height of their success, Ivan employed 11 men who manufactured the parts for the Dorr Westbury mill and the well-known Quorn tool grinder and other model engineering machines and components designed and sold through the MES brand. The improvements to the Mark II gave it a larger table, increased quill length and later improvements were made to the reduction gearing system incorporating a helical gear train to replace the noisy spur gear arrangement. MES of Chesterfield continued production of the machine kit well into the late 1990s. Sadly, Arnold Thropp passed away in 1990, but a debt of gratitude is owed to both Arnold, Edgar and Ivan for their contribution to the humble model engineer's toolkit. Now, considering that the cost of a full door Westbury set of castings way back in the 1970s was approximately £250, and the average man on a middle income wage earned around £35 a week, so this was quite a considerable and calculated investment for the home model engineer. I think for this very reason the investment of cash and time to build this machine resulted in some very precisely engineered machines, as these were being built by discerning model engineers for their own personal use, and some very fine examples of this do-it-yourself milling machine were produced, something which can't really be said today with the advent of mass-produced import machines. Naturally, with the unstoppable advance of commercial capitalism, the advent of these low-cost imports from the far east of Asia have dampened the enthusiasm and the appeal of building your own machine from a set of parts, so it became less attractive to the modern engineer and the once celebrated Dorr Westbury machine was ultimately shelved into the history books of model engineering. Fortunately, though, that isn't the end of the story. As with everything vintage today in good old 2019, there's always people who appreciate vintage, almost forgotten machines. And there are a few surviving Westbury Light Mills, Door Westbury Mark 1s, and of course Door Westbury Mark 2s still out there in the sheds and workshops of model engineers throughout the world, which get daily use or have been lovingly restored back to their glory 
and absorbed the love and attention from their devoted owners, me being one of those people. So, that was just a short historical introduction to the Dor Westbury Mill, and I hope you enjoyed this short intro as much as I've enjoyed researching about this great machine. From its beginnings born from the need of an alternative to the vertical slide lathe milling, and the rise and ultimate fall of this wonderfully successful compact benchtop hobby mill. Thanks for watching.